What's up everyone, this is Isaac from Hunter Smash Fitness. I wanted to do a video today. Um, I've had a bunch of people ask me lately about what I take for pre-workout, uh, stuff like that. So I wanted to go ahead and make a video about that and uh, just let you know what I take, what the benefits, uh, some of the studies say that some of the benefits of each of these products are, when I take it, how much, all that sort of stuff. So first of all, before we start going with the supplement, I wanted to say, None of the supplements that I use are flavored. Um, and so they will taste nasty unless you flavor them somehow. So usually if I want a little bit extra, I will use Spark. Uh, I don't know, there you go. So I'll use Spark if I want a little bit extra, uh, some caffeine, stuff like that in it. If not, I'll just use Country Time Lemonade flavoring or something like that. Just something that has some taste so it's not just um bitter supplements that i'm tasting so yeah i feel like the the lemonade is nice uh but you can do whatever flavor you want anything anything that you find to just put a little bit extra in that's gonna have a little bit of flavor basically before we go any further first off i wanted to say I buy all of my stuff in bulk from NutriCost. So right here, I can put a link in the video. Um, NutriCost, they've been awesome. I've been doing it for a couple years now. Uh, usually I do one order every year. I wait till Black Friday and then I, uh, usually they'll do like a 25 or 40% discount. And then I spend, you know, 200 bucks or so on basically a year supply of all this stuff. So it works out pretty well because instead of spending, you know, 30 bucks a month or 40 bucks a month or something on pre-workout and, and everything else, I can just do one bulk order, uh, get everything that I need, and then I'm set for the rest of that year. So obviously, again, I am not a doctor. I'm not a registered dietitian, anything like that. Um, I have a little bit of training in nutrition. Most of the supplements that I use are through trial and error, basically. I've um, tried them, heard ideas from other people, done some research on it, added it to my mix. Some, some supplements I found didn't like them, didn't like what it did and how it made me feel or anything, so I dropped it. Um, and then what I'm using currently seems to be what works best for me um, as far as energy boost, uh, prolonged, you know, ability to, to work out, pr uh, increased power output, all that sort of stuff is what I'm looking for. I'm not really doing a lot of endurance training at the moment. I don't do a lot of, you know, 12 mile runs, 15 mile runs or anything like that. Um, a couple times a year I'll go out and I'll, I'll do like six miles just to make sure I still can. But as far as endurance goes, I'm not doing a lot of that. So most of my supplements are not really, um, pushed more towards endurance, they're more pushed towards power output. So they're trying, I'm trying to increase the amount of power that my body can produce, increase um, the uh, potential output of the muscle during a short period of time, not for a prolonged period of time. So most of the time when I'm looking up supplements, I will use either examine.com or I have a book that I got from Barnes Noble a while back, Power Eating. Um, or I'll just go on Google Scholar and try and look up studies that have been done on it, something like that. Um, some supplements and stuff that I see, it looks like it's not even really worth your time. Um, so I don't even really bother with them. Others, I'll give it a shot. So first one that I wanted to talk about is beta alanine. Um, beta alanine is quite popular. You'll see it in almost all pre-workouts, it seems like. Um, with beta alanine, so one cautionary uh, thing to mention about it is that it can cause um, paresthesia, uh, numbness, tingling. Some people will get kind of a flushed feeling if you have too much of it in your system at once. It'll make your, your face feel hot and stuff like that. Um, so it can have some effects like that. No studies have shown that that's uh, dangerous or damaging in any way. It, it lasts for just a little while and then slowly works its way out of your system. Um, so that's just one thing to mention. If you're starting beta alanine, I would say definitely start on the lower end of the dose, probably you know 0.8 to one gram, somewhere around there. Uh, with my pre-workout, I usually put in about three grams. Um, but again, it kind of depends on the day. If I'm if I'm already uh, fairly hyped up or something like that, um, I already have a lot of energy. I'm really gung ho to get to the gym. 
sometimes I'll leave beta alanine out. Uh, so it, it kind of depends on how I'm feeling too. I try and I try and cater it to to me how I'm doing that day. Um, so that I'm not just putting tons of stuff into my system that I don't necessarily need. If I'm already awake and alert, I'm not going to be putting caffeine, not going to be putting beta alanine, stuff like that in there. Um, so one of the benefits of beta alanine is that it seems to, its peak performance is usually in the 60 to 240 second range. Um, so... If you're, if you're lifting heavy in the gym, it kind of helps you get those one or two extra reps at the end. Um, so it's not necessarily, not necessarily going to be helping you if you're doing a 15 minute block uh, or anything like that. It's more, it's more in that one to four minute block of power output. It won't necessarily increase overall power output, but a lot of the studies have shown that it does help reduce fatigue. And I've definitely noticed when I include it in my pre-workout, um, I can usually have longer sets. I can have more reps in each of my sets, not necessarily heavier weight in each of my sets, but I can definitely do more. And then of course, you know, more volume, more weight, more whatever is going to be, it's going to be more muscle gain, more muscle mass, more, uh, strength you know, increase overall. So it's going to be beneficial in that sense. So next I wanted to talk about touring. Um, this is kind of an interesting one. I did not use it for a long time. I've only just recently started including it. Uh, taurine is found in meat. It's, it's, a, it's an amino acid that's found in meats. It's not found in vegetables at all. So if you're a vegan or, or vegetarian or something like that, it's usually a good idea to be supplementing a lot of these amino acids, these essential amino acids um, that are used by the body. So some of the benefits of taurine a lot of the times, a lot of the studies that I've read, it was used more with uh, epileptics and diabetics, stuff like that, um, can increase blood flow, improve, you know, um, insulin resistance, stuff like that in the body, but it can also uh, decrease, there's been some studies that have shown that it can decrease uh, muscle damage during a workout, so it'll basically improve recovery between workouts, which can be really beneficial long term because if you're working out four, five, six times a week, having something like this that can help you recover between each one um, basically improves your overall exercise, your overall fitness. Um, usually up to three grams a day has been studied with no negative side effects. Um, on, on the bottle, they recommend two grams a day. That's what I've been what I've been taking. Um, and that seems to work just fine for me. I haven't noticed any anything negative with it. Um, but yeah, overall, it seems like it's a pretty good one. I, like I said, I've only been using it for a little while, so I'm not as positive how well that affects me as some of the others. So the next ones that I want to talk about are L-arginine and citrulline malat. Um, citrulline malat, it's basically, it's, uh, it's turned into L-arginine by the kidneys. So citrulline is just bonded with the uh, malic acid, the uh, salt basically, and then when it gets to the kidneys, it's, it's transformed into arginine. So it's an amino acid, it's found in the body. Um, studies have shown that taking L-arginine is not as effective as taking L-citrulline, um, but it looks like it's good to have both. So for a dosage of citrulline, L-citrulline malat, um, they recommend six to eight grams before workout. And for L-arginine, they recommend five grams before workout. So kind of what I've done after looking it up and reading about it a little bit is I'll usually do three grams of arginine and three grams of citrulline. And that way I have one that's instant access and one that takes a little while to be transformed. And it seems to work a little bit better for me because it prolongs the effect. Um, so basically what this amino acid is gonna be doing in the body. So it, it increases blood flow, increases insulin sensitivity, um, a lot of that sort of stuff, increases nitric oxide in the body. And with all of that, it um, you know decreases blood pressure a little bit, uh, helps increase power output, reduce fatigue, um, just kind of helps everything work better. It doesn't have any drastic effects on anything in the body, but it, it seems like it's a really good overall uh, balancer for just keeping your energy level up for a prolonged period of time, which a lot of times when I'm working out, uh, I'll be in the gym for three hours or something like that. And so having, uh, having this, it helps 
helps me have that high energy level for the entirety of the workout. Um, so yeah, helps, you know, helps get that pump a little bit better, helps, uh, helps just everything work better, um, as well as increasing power output uh, and, uh, and reducing fatigue. Next one I wanna talk about is L-glutamine. Um, so L-glutamine is a little bit different. It's a conditionally essential amino acid. Um, so, this one, especially if you're if you're vegan or vegetarian, something like that, you'll want to be supplementing with it. Otherwise, it might have some increase in power output, um, increase in uh, stuff like that, but it's not as vital. A lot of the times, if I'm taking a protein powder or something like that, that is more deficient in glutamine, then I'll I'll add that to it. I don't necessarily take it pre workout. Some of the benefits, um, it can increase muscular endurance, stuff like that. Some of the studies, they seem a little spotty. They're not, they're not positive on it. I have noticed, like when I take it, I do seem to feel a little bit better. But if I leave it out, I don't notice a ton of change. Um, so it, it could be more of a placebo. It might not. Um, either way, it is an, it is an amino acid. It is important for your, the body. The body does need it. Um, if you're getting it in a normal diet, you can include it. Otherwise, it seems like it's, it's not as vital. If you want to save money, I'd say don't bother getting it, um, unless you're vegan or vegetarian, something like that, of course. Um, but yeah, you can take it pre-workout. Um, it'll help. I find that it does help kind of smooth out the flavor of some of the other ones. Some of the leucine and uh, citrulline and stuff like that can have more of a bitter taste. Throwing in a little bit of glutamine actually kind of helps even that out slightly. Um, so you can't do it just to help with the uh, flavor. And then also a lot of studies have shown that it helps with sugar cravings as well. So if you find that you are addicted to sugar and that you're craving candy and stuff all the time, supplementing a little bit of glutamine may, may actually help with that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's worth a shot. But anyways, generally I will take that with my protein after my workout, not necessarily pre-workout. So sometimes I will take that and uh, sometimes the taurine, stuff like that, uh, post-workout instead of pre-workout with my protein. Next one that I want to talk about is creatine, creatine monohydrate. So I feel like creatine, um, to a lot of people that haven't really done much research, research on it um, has a very negative connotation. They, they associate it with a lot of the steroids and, and all that sort of garbage sarms, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's not, it's, it's very well researched. Creatine I think is the most researched supplement on the market. Um, all the negative side effects and stuff that you hear about, there's not really much research to back those up at all. Um, so, before we talk about it more, let's first look at some of the negative side effects. So creatine, if you take too much at once, it can give you diarrhea and that is very miserable. Um, it's the same thing with the arginine and the uh, glutamine, I think, and the leucine as well. They can, they can uh, be very unpleasant if you load too much at once. Now, a lot of people will talk about uh, creatine loading. You want to do a loading protocol for five to seven days and then stay on for three weeks and then get off and everything else. I've, I've looked up a bunch of that and, and there's not a lot of evidence to back that up. Um, creatine, you're going to be getting a lot of it with uh, beef, pork, fish, stuff like that. Um, so you're going to be taking in a lot of it anyways. Um, I, I, I don't really see much backing to the loading protocol and everything because it's a slow release. There's, uh, your, your body, it stays in the body for a little while and, and your body uses it. So if you're taking some every day, it's going to build up to the appropriate level naturally. And I don't think you really have to, to, to load it as they say. I feel like that's more of a, almost more of a marketing scheme for them to try and sell more creatine. Because if they tell you to take a lot all at once for the first week, uh, you're going to burn through a lot more. And honestly, I don't, I don't really see any benefits to that. I've, I've tried doing a loading protocol with it and I've tried doing it regularly and I, I literally didn't see any difference. Um, so some of the benefits of creatine are it can help with weight gain. It helps um, increase uh, water transport and everything else, um, increase energy into the cell, all that sort of stuff. So there's, 
Um, if you want to look it up, you can go. There's thousands probably of research articles on creatine. There's so much information on when you should take it, when you shouldn't take it, what you should uh, mix it with, if you shouldn't. Um, it, there's there's so so much looking at it, and and there's not a lot of negative on creatine. Um, it's most of the stuff has has shown that it's a really positive uh, supplement to take. So some of the major things is helps with weight gain and it helps with power output. Uh, those are the two big things. And so when you're taking it, you know, just the, a little bit every day. Um, yeah, it really seems to help with that. And they have all these different charts and everything for uh, how many grams per day uh, per body weight and, and everything else. Um, I usually take four or five grams a day. I, f I feel like that's kind of that that's kind of where it seems to work best for me. If I take more than that, it causes more kind of bloating in the in the stomach and um, and I, I just don't enjoy that. Uh, but yeah, so if you if you wanted to do one, I would say creatine is definitely a, a very promising one. I do the uh, micronized uh, creatine because it dissolves a lot better in liquid. Uh, you want to do creatine monohydrate. The other ones on the market, um, they're more just kind of marketing ploys, I feel like. Creatine monohydrate is some of the cheapest and, it, and it's the most studied and it, and it looks great. So I would say just go with that. Uh, the micronized again dissolves better in water. So if you're taking it pre-workout or anything like that uh, It's it's a little more palatable But don't Don't overload it because you will be running to the bathroom Within about 30 minutes or so 30 minutes to an hour and it can be quite miserable So the next one that I want to talk about is leucine uh, It's another amino acid uh, It's a branch chain amino acid um this one, it's primarily in building muscle is, is where it's most active and in uh, activating uh, the protein known as mTOR. So if you want to know more about mTOR, you should look up Christian Thibodeau. Uh, he has a channel, uh, Tib Army or Thib Army, it's T-H-I-B Army on YouTube. Um, and mTOR is one of his favorite topics. He, he will talk about it constantly and it's and and he's correct because if you want to build muscle that's one of the primary methods that you're gonna need to use is you want you, you want to be activating your protein synthesis um so leucine is one of the primary ways of doing that uh if you if you want to build muscle you need to be taking leucine um to increase that protein synthesis and actually build the muscle appropriately um it looks like most of it's uh, insulin, you know, type effects, glucose type effects, all that sort of stuff. Um, mostly, it has about a forty-five minute window or so. So, if you want to be taking it, I, you know, I'd say take it just before a workout, and it seems like that's usually when it's most beneficial. Um, but yeah, it, you can be supplementing a little bit of it daily. Um, on the on the can, they recommend five grams a day. If you look it up online, it can be uh, up to I think I've seen up to twelve grams a day recommended. I I probably wouldn't go that high. I'd probably say three to five grams is decent because you're also going to be getting it in some of your foods and stuff like that too. So, um, but yeah, that's the last. Uh, yeah, that's another good one to take. So another one I wanted to talk about is betaine and hydrous or trimethylglycine. This is one that, again, I would say if you're if you're a normal, healthy uh, individual, then it's not as vital. Um, I kind of like it. It increases cell hydration and um, uh, resilience to stressors, stuff like that. So if you're doing a lot of heavy deadlifts or something like that, I find that when I'm taking it, I, I feel better the next day than if I don't take it. So it can kind of help with that, uh, some kind of protective fa uh, factors, basically. Uh, I would say it's not as vital though. If you don't want to, if you don't want to buy it, I'd say don't buy it. It's it's uh, it's nice to have if you're doing some heavy days. One other thing though is that if you load too much on this, it will cause diarrhea as well. So you want to be careful with that. I generally take uh, 
about 0.5 grams to one gram. Um, the recommended dose that it has on the can is 1.5. Um, but again, I really only take it on more of my heavy days generally. So uh, some of the studies show that you know, taking it up to six grams a day can help with uh, fatty liver issues, things like that. But again, you're probably gonna be having some other negative side effects such as diarrhea. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, it could be worthwhile if you have some of those issues. Uh, otherwise, I'd say it's not necessary. So the last one that I wanted to talk about other than protein, which I've made a video on protein before if you wanna do an isolate or a concentrate, I use the concentrate because I'm not really worried about uh, only having the protein in there. If there's some fat, some uh, carbs, stuff like that, it's uh, it's not a huge deal for me. I'm not trying to trim down to 5% body fat or anything like that. So yeah, uh, but the last one I want to talk about is dextrose. Um, dextrose is simply glucose. It's a carb. Uh, dextrose just means that it comes from corn. Um, so dextrose is kind of nice if I'm having a day where I just, I do not have the energy to get in the gym, work out, or if I know that I haven't really had the carbs that I need or anything for the day, uh, I will take some dextrose. It's just straight carbs. Um, shoot straight into the system, go work out. Uh, you can also do it afterwards if you've had a really heavy day and you're completely drained at the end of it. Mix in some dextrose with your protein powder at the end of your workout or something like that, and it can it can really help your recovery, give you that energy back because it floods floods all the muscles back up, fills them back up with uh, with energy. So dextrose is kind of just it's something where um, I'll take it every once in a while. I know some people prefer Skittles, uh, some people prefer a Snickers bar. Um, you can do whatever you want, honestly. It's 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 just basically sugar it's carbs it's um it's a simple simple carb breaks down really quickly into the system um i'll notice it when i take it um within a couple minutes i i notice that i kind of have more of that sugar rush a little bit so it's it's a nice tool to have it's a nice thing to have on the back uh back burner kind of just ready to go if you need it it's not necessary uh like I said, it's, I mean, if you have some apples or something available, you can also do that. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just another tool. It's something that if I, if I get back from the gym and I'm completely beat, I completely exhausted myself as I'm making my protein shake, I'll throw in a scoop of dextrose as well. And it just kind of helps fill everything back up. Just kind of, um, uh, make me, make me feel more energetic again, uh, get me ready for the day again. So just another tool, um, with the protein, like I said, I do the concentrate, um, if you're into bodybuilding, if you're trying to cut weight, if you have your diet, you know, tracked down to every last carb and everything, isolate may be more beneficial for you because then it's simply the protein. Um, but as far as that goes, it, yeah, that's up to you as well. So anyways, that's about it for today. I just wanted to, uh, let you know kind of my thoughts on what I'm using, how I use them, um, my dosage, stuff like that. If you have any comments or any questions about anything, feel free to comment down below. Feel free to ask questions. Um, a lot of the stuff, like I said, I go to examine.com or I have, you know, my book power eating that I'll look stuff up, uh, or just go to Google scholar and just look up research articles and just see what I can find. So anyways, that's about it for today. I hope everyone is doing well. Have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Um, and yeah, feel free to comment, like this video. I will put a list down below, uh, with a link to all the different, uh, supplements, um, and, uh, yeah, just let me know what you think. Let me know what you like to use for pre-workout. So anyways, that's it for today. Uh, once again, this is Isaac from Hunter Smash Fitness and uh, just remember to always improve that 1%.